I'm Randy Livingston. I was born and raised in the inner city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Grew up in the Calio housing projects. Like a typical kid, I pretty much, you know, grew up. Sports was a way for me to, you know, stay out of trouble. Um, I played football when I was younger, still passionate about it. That was my first love. And then, I, you know, I fell in love with the game of basketball and started playing basketball at the age of nine. Wasn't very good at it. And, um, you know, I guess my goal was always to be better than Big Brother. And so that's what pushed me to, you know, kind of become more intrigued with basketball. I think I was introduced to gambling at a very, very early age. Um, to be honest with you, it was a way of life in the family and the environment that I grew up. You know, basically for us to go on AAU trips or go play basketball out of town, sometimes to little cities like Morgan City, you know, my mom would have plate sales, but when they had the plate sales, they had card games. So I always remember, you know, how focused, laser focused, you know, people were when they were playing, you know, card games. And so when you're a little kid, those are impressionable. You can see that. And um, that's just what, you know, you kind of thought was a way to earn some money. From ages 12 to, well, 11 to about 16, I won every award possible. I was National Player of the Year, Gatorade National Player of the Year, um, Naismith Player of the Year with um, Rasheed Wallace and Jason Kidd, who turned out to be magnificent pros. And then after graduating from Newman, I went on to LSU, got a scholarship, full ride. Problem gambling didn't really start till I got to college. Um, I think that was probably the, you know, first time you put, I betrayed my values and, you know, to try to get on the boat being underage and still was going gambling. You know, I think that's when it first became a problem. To think I could go on the boat was, I mean, a little naive and nobody would know me, but I looked old enough, but still to risk possibly going to jail or getting a citation. You know, I think that's when the problems came. So I got hurt had surgery, redshirted my freshman year at LSU. So all this utopia never got hurt, not an ankle injury, nothing. And then I have a massive injury, go to LSU, sit out, came back the next year, was doing incredibly, was leading the country in assists, averaging about 15 points and 10 assists. We were winning, things were going well. And then, bam, I hurt the same knee again. I think just during that time, idle time, depression, not really knowing how to handle what I was going through, probably just, you know, evascavated what was, you know, was already a problem at that point. Decided to put my name in the draft. I get drafted by the Houston Rockets, 42nd pick in the 1996 draft. I got to play with Akeem Olajuwon, the top 50 player all the time, Charles Barkley, Clyde Drexler my freshman year, so I'm in heaven. Now, the gambling didn't go away. Just because I got drafted, I just had more access to cash, to money, and you know, to give <clears throat> a young person a lot of money that they had never seen in their whole life. During the season, I don't think I gambled as much, probably on the plane, but then as soon as the off season came, I need some time. So the three months, whatever I had made, by the time the end of the summer came, I had gambled. I would work hard, train, and then get an MBA job, and then I would say for about 11 straight years in the summer, most of it would be gone. I think there were times where I know I had a huge problem, but for whatever reason, doing while you're playing career, you're still chasing, you're still in the fantasy world. And that's what, that's what you did. What comes with, you know, problem gambling, two failed marriages, um, relationship with your kids, those are all things that are things that it comes with problem games. I, I just had to be fooling myself during that time thinking that it was okay because once you're on a gambling binge, it's no way you could be emotionally stable for a team, even though you did your best. But if you just think you didn't have that, you know, you could have maximized more of your career. I had did a self exclusion. I'd won a lot of money and I tried to cash it in. And then they took me and then the police came in the back. And you know, luckily I didn't go to jail, but they gave me a citation. And then two weeks later, I went to another boat in Baton Rouge and the same cop. And so when he pulled me, he was like, I know we're not having this problem again. And I think at that point, yeah, I didn't get the money. They took the earnings. And so 
But I walked out and I've probably seen this sign many, many times. I just saw a sign, 1-800, blah, blah, blah. So I called it and I probably was on the other end of it, Ms. Jenkins, and then I um, came in. I think we talked, we had that conversation earlier when I was here. And I wasn't really sure what to do. You gave me the options. And then at this point, I had to open up to my wife and tell her what happened. And so what most people don't understand is, and that's why, but it, but it's any addiction, but when someone's ready, they're ready. And until you're at that point, there's not much someone else can do. We can try, but the person has to be ready. And I think I was just ready. You go through all the process that you have to do, and then it started getting better. It didn't go away with overnight, but I think every day it got better when I didn't go. And then next thing you know, it was a year. Next thing you know, it was two years. Next thing you know, it was three years. I think if you know why you're gambling or why you're drinking or why you're addicted to drugs, you can sort of kind of unwind some of that stuff. But if you never know why or you don't have any tools in the toolbox to deal with it, it's, it's impossible. Capital Area Human Services, thank you for being a part of my journey and getting me back on the right track.